And now without further ado, I want to introduce Weston Vince. Weston is a JavaScript developer on the Batovi React team. He is a generalist and has worked in the past as a full stack and front end developer and has experience using a wide variety of tech stacks. For fun, he enjoys game development and participates in game jams as part of a small team. Game jams, that sounds fun. All right, Weston, uh, come up on stage, the floor is yours. You see that all right? Okay, perfect. All right, so today I'm gonna to be talking to you about React to Web Component. So this is a Batovi library. Um, and before I get into too much details about the React to Web Component library specifically, I will just go over a little refresher on what a web component is. So what is a web component? A web component is a suite of different technologies that can be used to create custom, reusable, and encapsulated HTML tags. So the main advantages are that it is easy to use, uh, so it's great, uh, easy to use and uh, reuse and share, sorry, uh, which is great for making widgets and plugins. It has native functionality with all modern browsers uh, with ES6 functionality and it is easy to write and format readable code. Uh, web components are comprised of three main technologies. We have custom elements, we have the shadow DOM, and we have HTML templates. So custom elements are JavaScript APIs that allow for the creation of custom elements and their behavior. So you can essentially write your very own HTML elements, include your logic and styling in their own separate uh, uh, element and use them as you please. Uh, the Shadow DOM is a set of JavaScript HTML APIs that allow for encapsulating a Shadow DOM tree to an element. So you can see a little diagram below. We have a Light DOM and Shadow DOM. Um, the Light DOM has a bunch of elements, and the Shadow DOM is only accessible to the Shadow host. So all of the styling and logic within there is not leaked out into the Light DOM. Uh, and we have HTML templates uh, where you can use template and spot tags to allow for markup to be written and not displayed on a rendered page. We'll mainly be focusing on custom elements and Shadow DOM for React to Web Component. Uh, but now that we know what Web Components are, we can dive a little deeper into what a React to Web, what React to web Component is. So like I said before, it is a library and it allows you to convert React components into custom elements that don't need to be mounted through React. So, the custom element that you create acts as a wrapper for its underlying React component, and you can easily use it with other projects and frameworks that have access to HTML. So basically any modern browser, just like a regular web component. It's only about one kilobyte once minified in gzipped, and it is built and maintained by Batovi. So now that we know a little bit about what React component, React to, React to Web Component is, we can talk about how to use React to Web Component. We'll start off with a little bit of basic usage. Um, this is all from the README, uh, so you can easily follow along or revisit this on your own if you want to visit the GitHub page. Um, so the basic usage here, we would just install using npm, very simple npmi, React to Web Component. We would create a React component, uh, and in this example, we have a greeting component uh, that renders some H1, an H1 tag, with the text hello, and then uses this.props.name to display the name property value. Uh, once we have this component, and this can be any React component, we would call React to Web Component and custom elements not defined. So to call React to Web Component, we first must import React to Web Component from our library. Then we can, as what we do here is we create a constant called web greeting. We call the, we assign it the value of the result uh, for calling React to Web Component and we pass in our greeting, we pass in React and React DOM, and all we have left to do is define the web greeting here to uh, be our constant web greeting that we've created earlier. And once you've done this, you can use a web greeting like any other HTML element. So we can use it programmatically, uh, and here we have a little document.create element, and we can use web greeting because we've used React to web component, and we have this as a free to use element now. Uh, and then we would take the name property uh, of the web greeting, assign it the value standards fan. And now when we append the web greeting to the body of our document, the rendered HTML shows hello standards fan in an H1 tag, just as we'd expect. We can also do this declaratively. So we can just hard assign the inner HTML to the web greeting opening and closing tags, then 
fetch the first child uh, and its name property, assign it the value cool beans, and then we can render out its HTML uh, here and see hello cool beans. Excuse me. So to by default, React component, React to Web component only passes properties to the React component and does not use HTML attributes. But we can use HTML attributes if we just assign, uh, if we work with the prop types as seen in this example here. So we take our same greeting component from before, we uh, access its prop types and assign the name property a string and is required value. And now React Web Component knows to look for the name attribute whenever you use your web greeting component. So we can see here, we just call the, uh, we just render the inner HTML of the body to be web component, uh, sorry, web greeting and with the name uh, um, attribute assigned amazed and we have hello amazed. So we no longer have to use JavaScript to manually assign that name property. We can just use the attributes. So um, the meat of React Web Component is the React to Web Component function, which accepts a React component, React, React DOM, and some optional options. What you get is a class. What, what is returned is a class that extends from HTML element and can be further extended if you wish to add on to uh, functionality. Um, so the React component is just simply the component that you want to pass. Um, now you can pass, you, you need to pass in React and React DOM. So whatever version of React and React DOM that your component is working with, you just need to pass it along. And then you have optional parameters. And the only parameter that I believe exists right now is the shadow parameter, which allows you to render a shadow DOM instead of a light DOM. And I'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. Uh, so it's worth noting that React and React DOM uh, arguments are, it, it are compatible with React Compat in case you want to further minimize the uh, size of your web component. Um, so I'm just going to get into a little example of how you would use um, like the the benefits of the Shadow DOM and like how you would use it with React Web Component. So this is a simple example here. We have the HTML and JavaScript of uh, of React Web Component example. So up here we have the HTML. Um, and we uh, import our React Web Component script. We have a very simple styling with a class red that renders the text color to be red. And we have, uh, we use our web component that we create down here um, and assign the name uh, value. Uh, we assign the name value Weston so that it renders hello Weston. So now it's worth noting the only change that I've made to the greeting component that we've made earlier is that I've added this class name red. Um, and then you see in the output, we have all my, I, we have the output is rendered in red text, which is, might be expected behavior, but this red class doesn't ex actually exist within our web component. It actually exists within the root application, which is not really what we want. We don't want our web component interacting with, uh, we don't want our web component, which should be isolated, always interacting with the root component or the root application. So we have a solution for this using a shadow DOM. So the only difference in the code here is that we have a, we've passed in the shadow true as an optional parameter. And now the, uh, and, and now the component here is encapsulated entirely and no longer has access to this red class, which exists outside of the web component itself. So this will help you uh, isolate behaviors and, and, and prevent unexpected behaviors when you're, uh, using web components with larger applications. Um, so now that we've seen how, now that we've uh, used React, React, React to Web Component, we can dive into how it works. Uh, so the gist of it is that React to Web Component creates a constructor function whose prototype is a proxy. Now this proxy is a ES6 JavaScript feature. Uh, so just like, uh, before it's usable on all modern browsers. And um, this proxy acts as a trap. So whenever a property of an instance on our custom element is set, the proxy will re-render the React component inside the custom element, and it will create an enumerable getter and setter on the instance to save and set the value 
or to save the set value and avoid hitting the proxy in the future. Um, so now that we know a little bit about how it works, we can talk about some of its main advantages. The advantages of React to Web Component are that it's very easy to install and use. We've seen it before, just a simple NPM uh, command. Uh, you can easily leverage the React skills of developers rather than having them learn an entire web component framework. Um, and you have the optional use of the Shadow DOM with a simple Boolean. And you can easily integrate uh, React to Web Component uh, components with Salesforce, Shopify, or other website builders that do not use React. So you know, in, the, in the past, you would probably have to use an iframe if you wanted some full feature functionality to put into some, to put some uh, advanced functionality into something like WordPress, which does not have access to React. You would need to create like an iframe, an isolated program, uh, and import it that way. And iframe can be a bit tricky. It doesn't communicate as well as React as a web component would with other components. Um, so now that we've seen when some of the advantages, uh, it might be worth looking into when might it not be the best idea to use React web component. So Put it simply, uh, you might not want to use a web component at all if you need to support legacy browsers, or if you're building an application that already uses a framework like React, Vue, or Angular. Now, this does have some exceptions. I just mean that you shouldn't use um, web components uh, to solve a problem that might already be solved in the framework that you're using. And you might want to use a different web component library or framework if maybe you're developing a component that would be very simple. So, obviously, if you are not going to use all the React features, it's not really worth it to import uh, React and, and build a full feature React component if you're just building a counter or something simple. Um, so that's about it. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions.